Hello everyone, this is a beginner's tutorial to show how you can cut a hole in an object. But I feel before I explain that, it will be helpful if I explain a little bit about an object's volume. And that's very important, especially for 3D printing, but also for modeling, because technically when you cut objects, you break the volume. So we need to have a good understanding of what a volume is and what water tight is, and then uh, we can go into um, teaching how to cut and then at the end if you watch till the end i'll give another cool tip about rotation so let's get started i'll start with some basic shapes but the same thing i do can work on any object so i have this basic uh cube and now let's take a uh, sphere so i'm taking a sphere i'll scale it down a little bit so i can move it in easily without peeking out from the sides and i'm going to move this into this object like this now before I start, so let's think about what a 3D object is. A 3D object is basically it's in 3D space, but that does not have to be uh, closed. You can have a surface that it's kind of bended, just like think about a 2D plane. Let's say we have this grid over here. If I'm bending this, twisting it, it becomes a 3D object, uh, but that's no longer, it's not a volume yet. So a volume is something that you can put in things inside. Uh, by definition, everything that you can, has volume is by definition 3D. So if you can put in things in that, in this box, that means it's 3D, but not every 3D is volume. You can have something that is 3D, but does not have a volume. When it comes to 3D printing, um, everything must have a volume, but it's a little bit more uh, stricter definition actually than a volume. So let me give you an example. So if I take this cube over here and I'm going to delete what I've just selected, the sides, uh, space or polygon. In this case, this object, this cube, has a volume. You can put in something inside here, but it's not a watertight volume. So if you put in water over here, obviously it will rinse out. So this is not a watertight volume. When it comes to 3D printing, you must have a watertight volume. Uh, there are some tools, and that's including Stitch and Scoop, that actually also considers um, volume in its operation, and the behavior will be different if you have volume or not. So that's why this is also very important to know when it comes to cutting holes. So let's get started. And l let me show you what you actually have when you have two objects like this. So if you think about it, if you have, let's say I'll reduce the opacity to 50, so you can look into this object. So what you see now is you actually have two separate volumes. You have this volume and this volume, and they stick in one to another. So in basic, you have the possibilities what you want to do. So when it comes to Boolean operations, a stitch and scoop, that's considered a Boolean operations, you have the possibility of combining this into one. But when you combine them, you want to make it into one volume, which in that case means you need to remove the inside. So this is basically what a union would do. A union would combine this. And if I finalize, you will see, and if I make this to opacity again 50, you'll see the inside volume is removed. There's no inside in it. It's totally combined, and that's what a union is doing. Now I'm going to undo this, this operation, and if you're gonna do now the other possibilities, let's think about what the other possibilities we have. Uh, let's make this again to 50. So the other possibilities is, you wanna give me just the inside. You wanna cut out just the inside, or you wanna cut out just this part, or just this part without the inside. So now when you see the cutting, let's think about, I can cut a hole in this object. If I cut a hole in this object, this object you can't cut a hole now, you can slice it. You can say, give me the inside, give me just this. But if you want to cut a hole in this object, it means cut this out, and this kind of is scooping out, hence the name stitch and scoop. You can stitch together like a union, and you can scoop out, which basically cuts out this part. So if I'm going to do now to show this part, I'm going to go, this is where that's called difference. If I'm going to cut out this part, the mesh tool, let's see what's happening. This is basically what you get. You get this cut out. And this actually makes a lot of sense because you have two volumes and you want to make a new volume with the possibility of removing this, which basically gives me this volume. And then this basically, the exclusion, if you see the image illustrates what it's doing, it will give me everything except the inside. In a case like this, that will be the same as a union, because what is a union doing? It gives me, it combines it, and we saw it remove the inside. This will do the same. 
So in such an object actually doesn't make a difference. It makes a difference if this other object would peek out from here, for example, there's different use cases where it can make a hole over here that is different, but in such an object it will behave the same. If you look at this object, intersection, this will give me just the pieces that intersect, which means it will slice off this part. So let's take a look. That gives me just this part. Okay, so now that we understand these basics, now we intersect. So let's understand how can I create a hole. This is not creating a hole. Well, this is actually two ways of doing it. So let's cancel this and let's see what we can do. So the intention is to create a hole over here to cut this out and not leave me the engraved part over here because I need to have a hole. So the first way we're going to do is we have to consider the volume and I, what we do to purse through the entire volume. So it's not saying that keep make this one volume and cut this out. We have to purse through the volume entirely to make it work. So how do we do that? I'll go now to my simple scale. I'll scale this object and I'll purse it out from the side as well. So now you have it from the side outside as well. And now let's take a look what's going to happen. Now if we're going to go to this tool, you're going to subtract the same thing over here. Now you got a hole through and through because now you got a nice volume like this. You can have a volume that is completely closed. And if you think about it, if you put in water, where is the a watertight, well, a watertight volume considered now, that's inside in the wall. If somehow you manage to put in water in this wall, it wouldn't be able to escape any of these. And this is the outside. This is one side outside, this is from the inside, but it's a, it's a, it's not a part of the volume and that's perfectly fine. So that's how you cut it in such a way. Now what if you want to cut it in a different way? You don't want to push through the other side of the object. Well, if you understand how volume works, then actually we can do it another way. So let's scale this back, this object, remove this, make sure it's not bursting outside. I'll remove it something like this just to keep it, oh, make it seem smaller. This is just have to know which side you're looking. So you see the lighting. Okay, so we know it's inside now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this object, not this part, this part, and I'm going to add a thickness to it. So we're going to add some thickness to it. Let's say three is fine. So you see now we have a thickness over here. So what you can see now a volume is the same way I said before when I pursed it through. The volume was inside in the, in the walls. In this case, the same thing. The volume is over here inside in the wall. Now it's true that I also have a volume inside of the cube. But this Boolean operation now sees that I have a volume over here. And therefore it can purse it through and cut it this way. So all I did is I added thickness, another volume to this cube. And now let's go and select both. And I'll take the same stitch and scoop. And I'll take the difference, the same idea. And voila, this side is not cut through, but this side, here you go. And what is the thickness of this? This is the wall. It completely rebuilt it. Actually, when I added a volume to the cube without first cutting a hole in it, that was no longer a good object to print because we had two volumes overlapping each other, one within the other without actually connecting them. So that's considered the same problem when I have these two together, where I have two separate volumes together without combining them. So when I add a thickness and something without cutting, that's what I got. But now I got perfectly what I need. I have a cut and it has thickness, so this is 3D printable. So I'll explain you what I just said about that we got a cut and we got a volume and otherwise we wouldn't by using another example and stitches and the add thickness, what add thickness is doing with another example. So let's go, I'll cancel this for now and I get rid of this sphere, no longer need it. And I'm gonna use now another tool. So I, I think I should get rid of this cube that has the thickness, I don't need the thickness now. So I'll take an, a new one. I can just undo the steps, but why not take a new one? So I take a new cube now and now I'm gonna to go to my drawings. So I go to my uh, 3D sketch in this case and I'm drawing a sketch on top of this. So I'm drawing something like this, just I don't focus at the moment the sizes and position, just to show the point. I'm selecting these two, and now I go to and modify that hole called cut with profile. So this, what this did, it created a cut. This is now cut by default and self cut whatever was the last operations being selected. So this has a lot of faces. If you look into it, it creates all of these connections. So it's 3D printable. It's all of these pieces, but I need this to now be selected so I can work on it. So it automatically selects it so you don't have to worry. So now I'll go to 
I can go to extrusion, for example, and start building with this. But in this case, what we talk about now, I want to make a hole. So I'm simply going to delete. Click my delete button and press yes. So now we got a hole through. You can see now, this is the hole. This is basically a complete hole. Now this object has a hole, but this object cannot, it does not have a volume. This is not 3D printable. Because if you think about it, you see this black edge because we still have this part. So let me get rid of this. It's easier to see just the object. So I get rid of this, and now this is what you get. I can look at it in such a mode, and this has a hole, completely a complete hole, but it's not 3D printable because there's no thickness to it, and there's no place in this object where you can actually put in water and it will stay inside. So now I need to add thickness. Now if I'm going to go and add thickness to this object, like this, let's say 3 again, now you got your edges. Now this is a watertight object because now you have the thickness, you have the wall, and this is what this is doing. So what I've just shown is that you need to consider cutting using a tool that considers to begin with a volume, that's a statistician's group called the Boolean operations, or, and that will behave differently depending if you first have thickness or not, if you have volume or not, or you can first cut using the cut with profile, those type of ways, or in some ways just manually position things and cut out, you can just select uh, faces and cut and so on, but then you need to add your thickness. Now one more thing that I started talking and I didn't explain very well, is if I add thickness to something without first cutting. So if I add and I delete this face like this, and I delete this and I add thickness to it now, this will give me basically thickness, this is watertight. But what if, let me undo this, and I don't delete anything. I have the complete object, and now I want to add thickness. Now if I add thickness, this is basically just going to position one object inside the other. So let's take a look. You have this, it's kind of like one object inside the other. This is not a watertight, I mean it is a watertight mesh, it's two watertight meshes. You have one cube and inside another cube, two separate meshes, which maybe some slicers will handle that. Um, self cut slicer does not have a problem with that, but some may have a problem. So, but in this case, this wouldn't work. And the example one I used before, stitch and scoop, if I put in something over here and cut it out, that tool actually compare, um, uh, fixed that volume, and that tool basically created the connection edges. Once it's cut it out, it actually also created the missing edges between these two parts, and. Uh, repaired that's the word i want to say it repaired it and basically created a complete um, watertight mesh so that's about this now about the uh, tip that i said at the end i'll say a tip about rotation so what i wanted to show is uh, since this is a beginner's video so i feel this is helpful to explain we need to understand the way we think about space and interact with the mouse so technically we are still on a 2d screen but we use projection to show it in a 3d now if i'm going to use my move tool you can take any gizmo and touch it and move it around and you can focus directly on the gizmo and move it in perfect direction with the gizmo direction where it points it and the more you focus to on that direction actually the better it will move that works very well and the same thing would be with scale but in contrast this actually in rotation this is different because technically you cannot your mouse is not designed uh, to rotate or your hand rather is not comfortable and uh, fluently rotating around this direction or around even around this direction especially not around this direction around here you can i can't even visualize it so what's happening is when you take a gizmo you can think about this as a tool to activate a protractor so let's say if i click on this you see we show a protractor right away your rotation is not focusing on the direction of the gizmo actually you see the gizmo disappears your rotation focuses on this gizmo, which is parallel to your screen. It is very easy to interact. So now I move around. You see my mouse focuses around this protractor. But as with any protractor, it depends how far we are. Look at this black line. It's now following next to it, which is larger steps. If I want to have very small steps and focus on any of these small lines, it's a little difficult when I'm close. So the further I move away, the more ease I get to make smaller steps. But still, my focus shifts to the protractor, not to the gizmo. The gizmo disappears. That's basically where my focus shifts, and that makes rotation and positioning quite easy and self-get. 
Okay, I hope this was helpful. If you like these type of tutorials, please like, subscribe, and tell me in the comments what else you want me to explain, and I'll be more than happy to say it. Thank you, have a great day.